When you talk about the Battle of Badr, as we said, there are khasa'is, there are these specific miracles, specific companions that were honored. And then there is the general outpouring of angels that come. Now, we talked about Abu Bakr anhu and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the way that Jibreel salam and Mikael salam are attached to those two in specific. But I want to talk about before Badr, another honor that is bestowed upon one man. And the entire preparation of Badr, you know, the day of Badr is an encounter with the angels as a whole. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ spent the entire night before crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his support. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, If tastaghithuna rabbakum fastajaba lakum. When you called upon your Lord, so he answered you, Anni mumiddukum bi alfin min al murdifin. That I am going to support you with 1,000 of my angels, one after the other. And so the way that the ulama explained this is that first it was 1,000, and the Prophet ﷺ continued to pray, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to respond. So Allah sent another 2,000, and then Murdifin, the rose behind, another 2,000 behind those 2,000. So if you do the math, 1,000 first, and then another 2,000, and behind those 2,000, another 2,000. So in total, that's where the number 5,000 angels total comes from the Qur'an, that 5,000 angels came down on the day of Badr. What does 5,000 angels look like when that is almost five times the entire population of human beings on the battlefield at that time? SubhanAllah, and if you've been to Badr, it's not a very large battlefield. So the angels are basically occupying every spot in the battlefield and around the battlefield. And they all come out at one time and you can feel the presence of them arriving. Abu Usaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was uh, a companion who fought in the Battle of Badr and he was blind later on in life. And he said, لو كنت معكم الآن بدر ومعي بصري. He said, if I was with you, he's talking to his students, if I was with you right now in Badr and I had my eyesight, I would show you a shi'b al-ladhi kharajat minhu al I would show you the exact valley, the exact place that all of the angels came out from. We felt their presence arrive in the skies from the valley. And subhanAllah, they took the form of our companions. What does that mean? Some of them came up to us in the form of our companions, but we knew that they weren't our companions. We knew they weren't human beings, right? And they were walking up to us and saying to us, Abshiru fa innahum laysu bi shay, wallahu ma'akum. Glad tidings to you, that side, they're nothing and Allah is with you. So the angels were coming to us in the form of our human companions and telling us to have thabat, telling us to be firm, telling us to have the glad tidings that this is going to play out in a way that is going to be to the detriment of the other side. You have nothing to worry about, that as soon as the swords start to strike, the malaika are going to be with you because Allah sent the angels to be with you. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says that Shaytan had a really bad day on the day of Badr. In fact, it was the worst day of his existence, right? So you look at Shaytan, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that the worst day of the year for Shaytan annually is Arafah. He hates Arafah. Why does he hate Arafah? Because, and we're talking about Iblis, the devil, right? He has sent his troops to work on these believers, to destroy them, right, for the entire year, their entire lifetimes. And here they are on the day of Arafah and Allah forgives them all. So undoes all of their work, all of the work of the shayateen. So the Prophet ﷺ said, that's his worst day is the day of Arafah, except for Badr. Why? أَمَا إِنَّهُ قَدْ رَأَى جِبْرِيلِ يَزَعُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Shaytan looked across and he saw Jibreel alayhi salam putting the angels in the rows. Okay, so Jibreel alayhi salam was commanding the army of the angels when Shaytan saw that, Shaytan knew that this was over, right? This was over before it started. And in fact, even Allah speaks to that. Shaytan, who was pumping them up the other side, when he saw Jibreel Islam, it's like he threw his arms up and he turned back on his heels and he said to the he said to the mushrikeen, he said to the, the disbelievers, I have nothing to do with you people. Uh, I see what you don't see, meaning this battle's over. Okay, so Shaytan gave up on the battle before it even started after he was giving them 
the hirs, right? This this uh, this determination to actually go forward on the day of Badr. Now, how did this happen, right? Some of the narrations say that Shaytan took the form of uh, a warrior, particularly the form of Suraq ibn Malik. And he's calling out to them from behind and saying, you might as well turn back because this army is going to defeat you. Abu Jahl responded and Abu Jahl shouted out and said, he's lying. This is all just a plan of deception from Muhammad وسلم, and his companions to stop you from going forward. And that's one of the reasons why the ulama say that Abu Jahl is the Fir'aun of this Ummah. He's the Fir'aun of this Ummah. He's the Pharaoh of this Ummah because that's what Fir'aun said to his people when they saw the clear domination of Musa Islam over the magicians and they had a chance to believe. He said that this is just a plan of deception, right? Makartumuhu fil Madina. You plotted this before you came here so that you could destroy our people, so that you could take the people out of their place. So Abu Jahal was truly being a pharaoh until the last moment where he was killed in that battle of Badr. Okay? So this is all happening before the battle even starts. This interaction of the angels and the believers, this sight, this vision of shaitan, uh, of the angels on the other side the sakina, the tranquility that is descending into the hearts of the believers, all of this is happening before this even starts. Abu Bakr and Ali. But there's one person who's going to be distinguished in the greatest way, subhanAllah, before this battle even starts. And that man is Az-Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Az-Zubayr, the first person to draw his sword in defense of the Prophet In Mecca, when he had heard that the Prophet was attacked, he immediately took his sword to defend the Prophet and he was known as the first person to draw his sword in defense of the Prophet ﷺ. And Rasulullah ﷺ said, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ حَوَارِيُونَ That every single Prophet had disciples. My Hawari, my disciple is Az-Zubayr. Az-Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, istajaba lil-Rasul He answers the Prophet ﷺ throughout his entire life. Anything the Prophet ﷺ calls for, Az-Zubayr comes forward. When no one else would answer the call to march forward, as Zubayr radiallahu anhu would always come forward. So what is the honor? As Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was wearing a yellow turban on the day of Badr. And when Jibreel and the angels arrive, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa looks at Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, Inna al-mala'ika nazalat ala sima al zubayr The angels came down dressed with the turban of Zubayr. So imagine subhanAllah, the feeling of Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the honor to Zubayr, that Jibreel alayhi salam and Mikael alayhi salam and all of those angels came down wearing the same turban that you are wearing as a sign of honoring you, not just because you're someone beloved to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi but because like the angels respond to Allah, you responded to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in every single situation.